Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. Mailbag special. Ding, 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 ding. Number four or something. Sure. You know, recorded when... Recorded in the gaps uh, between us being the whole days. We got together. Filling in the gaps. We're here. Right. What you got for us, PFAX? Oh, Hit me. You just want to get straight into it. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to say. Uh, I, I ain't sharing any news about what I've been up to. Oh, I'm just going to okay. go for it. Um, That's right. Are we just going to dive in and we're, not, we're just going to gamble? I'm, I haven't read ahead. Have you not been That's up okay. to anything? Um, no, That's I mean, I, I've got like a bunch oh, overnight no, I mean, Lewis, and stuff. Lewis, have you not been up to anything? You got nothing to share? Since yesterday? Not, not since... Well, Flax, you're not this... allowed to yeah. say oh, what our recording <laughs> schedule is. Sorry. <laughs> you, well, you are... It's just uh, it's just an insight into into how this works. We don't like to record two episodes in a row because then we've really got nothing to talk about. But we well, will mean, do we, it the day yeah, after. And, and this for a mailbag special. I mean, you know, the 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 the, the mailbag provides this is a lower the tier of, <laughs> this of, is a of Triforce C podcast. tier of Triforce right here. <laughs> so this is from uh, Gamer Guy seventy seven. After following a paper trail across Reddit, I finally found how to do this. Hopefully the email... Oh, this email is re in regards to Triforce episode 225. You might not remember, right. but there was mention of sentience and what that means Okay, uh, for a few oh, minutes at the beginning of the podcast. I do is remember. Is this the sentience sapience thing? I believe, well, sentience, yeah. I yeah. would like to clarify that sentience means the ability to feel things, the ability to perceive things. I don't know, I don't know what authority this person, GamerGuy77, is making this from, but he says any living thing that has some degree of consciousness is sentient, including insects, lizards, dogs, dolphins, and human beings. The word right. sentience is derived from the Latin word sentinium, senti sentintium. Senten I can't speak Latin, which means feeling. The adject right. word is sentient. The word sentience is often misused to mean a creature that thinks. All right, so here's the thing. I don't give a shit what the word meant in Latin. People always use that as a, as like a call to authority. Well, the Latin word is, right, nobody fucking speaks Latin. And our words may have been derived from Latin in many cases, but that doesn't mean that whatever the original Latin meaning of the word was is what it still means. Sapience so what means the ability to think, the capacity for intelligence, the ability to acquire wisdom. The scientific name for okay. modern man is Homo sapiens. Right, so here's another problem. You're saying has some degree of consciousness, but then we need to define what that is. And now you're saying think and intelligence. We need to define what that is. Define think. I think, I think there's a lot of overlapping here, right? You have the com what the computers have, which is intelligence. Okay. Is it? You have yeah, I think so. They can recognize patterns. They can like solve problems. They can do calculations. They can use objects. You know, like they can innovate. They can analyze. Then you've got the sapience, which I think is more a kind of. Is it like a kind of a, a common sense? Is that what it is? Is it more of like a, a sort of... A, a, I don't know a, if common sense has been codified in, in some way. Uh, as, I don't know uh, what, the, what the difference is, I guess. All I'm between... saying is that a lot of the time when people come come at me with definitions of what it is, they use other words that are ill-defined, like intelligence okay. and thinking and conscience because uh, consciousness, because what are those things? I want a nice scientific definition of what it means to be sentient without using words like think, because that's too loosey-goosey in itself, unless you're able to define what that means. And then we're down a whole okay, rabbit hole. How about this? Right, okay, how about this? There's four things. Consciousness, right? Emotion and, and sapience, and then intelligence, okay? And these things overlap in some way to form sentience. Okay, right. Um, so, so emotion, I guess, would be. That's I, us I'm talking and about a few other. I just like the idea of an of an alien. Okay, right. being like, or or a creature. Um, you know, or a computer. Like, I, I guess computers don't have emotion. Okay, um, but animals don't have consciousness. You know, they're not aware of their... I don't think animals are aware. Themselves. Like, I, I don't think they're aware that they're actually alive, right? Like, I think that, that like, most animals operate at a very low level of, like, uh, like, reflex and instinct and stuff, right? But I don't think that they burrow down in their den at night and think, like, what would happen if I died? Like, right. What, what am I going to do tomorrow morning? And, you know, like, they, I, I don't think... They're reactive. There's yeah, no, they're reactive. There's no, they're, there's they're no just thought. programmed to be like that. Yeah. yeah. Especially, I mean, when you talk about insects, I mean, Jesus, they're literally just a chemical reaction walking around. Like, there's no, there's no thought. 
there's no, I mean, for most animals in the world, there's no thought going on. I, I wouldn't, I mean, unless consciousness just means you are alive, why do we need a separate word for it? I mean, you know, yeah. there has to be some specific term that consciousness that means something beyond I am alive and I am aware of my surroundings. Because that could be a whole ton of, a whole ton of things that they'll exhibit no fucking intelligence whatsoever. Yeah. And an ant doesn't know what it's doing. It's just following chemical trails. Its body is reacting. There's no thought. There's no, yeah, there's no at, thought um, at all. And even the smartest computer is just following what it's been told to do currently. Right. There's no, it's not, it's not, it's not, you know, trying to escape or like, you know, taking over yet. Um, yeah. But maybe the ants are b- b- abiding their time, Pflax. <laughs> maybe yeah, the computers I'm sure they are, are as well. I'm sure they maybe are. they're watching for that opportunity to like, you know, take over from both ends. We've got the fucking animals going to rise up and the computer's going to rise up together. Maybe robot ants is what we need um who knows well, this is why aliens are so scary i think because aliens aren't going to be sexy big boobed four-legged blue women they're going to be fucking robot ants well, i'd you know rather they were the big boob blue women i think they should take some time to find the sexy blue like long-legged big <laughs> boob aliens right? what if right. they i mean can you imagine being the first human to have sex with one of these big boobed blue alien women you'd be a fucking celebrity be yeah. amazing. It's like a fucking it's like a fucking mailbox, right? <laughs> the humans have got to go through the mailbox and filter out like robot ants, don't want those giant fucking space wasps, fuck those guys. What if their doing... vaginas are like in their armpits, though? You know? What if they How have two vaginas? <laughs> two vaginas and wow. one under each that's, armpit. That's my fetish, actually, <laughs> since you hit there. Yeah, right, I'm here's another that. email. This is from Danny. He's Scottish. Just listen to the mailbag episode. I thought I'd give you some <laughs> phrases that are used in Glasgow. <laughs> Can he tell an ass for an elbow? Or can he tell if it's New Year or New York? That means it's, they're in a state of confusion. <laughs> right. Hold your wished, which means telling someone to be quiet. Oh, hold your wished. Go on your cell, which is a term of encouragement. As in, go on with is your... It? Yeah, go on your cell. Oh, which I is like, get out. go on your mad go on bollocks. Yourself. That's what get, they'd like, say in, uh, in Ireland. They'd go on your mad wow. bollocks. Have near Scooby. That's, I haven't got a clue. So oh, those I thought are, that was those... don't look. No. Like, I, God, these are all like, I, I I, would be like... You'd be lost. I would be, I'd be lost. Yeah, God, no. It doesn't make it, doesn't... It, I I pride myself on... No, I don't. I, I feel like I've got decent translation, right, right, most of the time. You know, when it comes to accents. Like, I feel like a lot of the time when someone's doing a big farmer accent or like um, a northern accent or even like an American country accent i feel like i can i can hear what they're saying i don't know like i don't i've never had a problem with getting the gist but just then i did um i didn't understand any of those that you said or or i just got them wrong so maybe uh, maybe in fact i've just been misunderstanding people for the last 20 years and confidently assuming that i understood what they were saying hmm it's making me doubt myself well i'm sure it's i'm sure it's fine. Let's move on Carry to the on. next one then. This is this is a long one. This next one, Lewis, is called The Art of Making Toilet in a Military Setting. Uh, so it's right. a combination of several things. First of all, as you know, the standard topic of the podcast is, is toilets. And also we, we have a kind of fascination for things like prison and the military because those are things we've never experienced and never would uh, no. in a million years. So uh, this is, this is the, the uh, answering the call of nature in a military setting. Find yourself in a small wood of planted pines in the heart of darkest Yorkshire, laid up beneath your poncho or basher in your platoon's patrol base or harbour. It might be stotting it down with rain. Stotting it down. Stotting. That's an, in- That's an interesting one. Yeah. yeah, or howling with a biting wind. Pick your poison. You've been moving all day, just finished setting up your harbour. Aside from two hour long shifts of sentry duty, your time until stand to next dawn is yours. You've eaten some rations, drunk some cold coffee from your flask, you've freshened up with a wet wipe, shaved out your mess tin shaved out and have finally okay. found yourself a comfortable spot in your basher then the need to urinate overcomes you is it worth it heading out into the elements to make the long trek to the portaloos all the way on the other side of the wood block after much wasteful consideration you decide it is <laughs> and you don your webbing and helmet and sling your rifle and set off to the bog so interestingly this is a lad on exercise in the military but he's going to a portaloo which is really not very hardcore at all is he yeah Trudge through your harbour area, endure the good-natured banter of your mates as you pass by their positions. Arrive at the portaloo, dragged there into position by some poor sod, and left for the use and comfort of troops on exercise. So <laughs> they use they have a fucking portaloo brought along. 
I, I see what you're saying. Set about the delicate it's... science slash art of wedging yourself inside a portaloo along with your rifle, webbing, and helmet. Then wrestle around your equipment so you can do your business. Observe the wadge of wet toilet paper clogging up the sink and shudder. Kick the flushing handle with your boot. Set about the awkward task of zipping up your fly beneath your webbing and long and windproof smock. Compose yourself and enjoy the fleeting moment of peaceful solitude before heading back out into the elements to platoon and your duties. As you turn to leave, observe the graffiti applied to the portal door via permanent marker by a dozen different hands. The strange slogans and mottos which are the common cultural currency, lovely alliteration there, of the rank and file, and the pained observations on the lot of troops on exercise. Uh, so there's a whole this bunch of them. This is fucking poetic. Yeah, yeah. Exit Holy the portal Jar your rifle on the door as you go. Make awkward eye contact with the colonel as he passes immaculately by, having climbed out of his command Land Rover on his way to do his business. Is he close enough to warrant the proper chipper, hello sir, of a subordinate towards a commanding officer of his regiment, or is he too far away? Would such a hello be an inappropriate, given the somewhat off-guard position you found him in? You decide on the latter and stalk off to your basher in search of hand sanitizer, Haribo, and your sleeping bag. And uh, that is the experience of, of going to the toilet in... Uh, in a military setting. Thank you. From a devoted Beautiful. listener. That was man, a very, oh, uh, very good email. Long, but good. Holy, that was that. I think you, you told could people that. to make them short, though. They, I did, long. but I thought that was an interesting one. I did think that was no. An that was it was poetic. That was, I was I was wrapped. Also, it was new information that was actually kind of entertaining, not just the the sordid details of a physics experiment. Do you know what I mean? Right. It is very, it's very lingo heavy as well. I like that the, the segue into yeah. the more lingo. The fact it's called and a harbor was... and, and where where you put your pitch. In yeah, the I, I, all these terms like some of them are familiar to me just from associated war games and stuff, but some of them aren't at all. I think, you, I think again, it's context clues, though, isn't it? When you play a Call of Duty game and it's like, oh, Private Davis, pick up the the tower and let's move move to the the logistics zone. You know, like they have, they but they have they have cool weird. They have a cooler, weirder name. Quirky names. Yeah, they they would have a cooler, weirder name than that. Like I know in the um, American military, they have the all loggy. kinds of. Uh, We're gonna move to the loggy. Yeah. It's like what? <laughs> the what? I <laughs> mean, I know they call it a hat. It's called a lid in the American military. And your shirt, a shirt <laughs> is called a blouse. Things like that. Right. Like all kinds of weird. You call it a blouse in the military? Yeah, in the in the Marines anyway. That's that's certainly what Jawhead led me to believe. Holy shit! Hmm. All right, this is from Jack. Hyperion, the latest Triforce has unlocked some new information from my school days. We would, for some reason, often push our asses into someone's crotch and say skillage. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jack has massively overestimated how old I am. Uh, and he uh. says to hear that skill was an African bum disease in the 70s is very interesting. For context, I am 23. Jack, I, for context, I am not... 83, all right? I, oh, nor am I 50, I'm, I'm 46. So the 70s, I was four years old. We didn't say that at, skill was an African mum disease until I got to the UK, so I would have been eight. This was the 80s. And I looked it up, and you can find lots of references in Google saying that school children used to say that skill, which was like, skill! That was a way of saying something was cool. It's like Kobe. Right, the counter to that was, that oh, you know skill is an African bum disease, don't you? Uh, and apparently there is a disease called skillage. We covered this the other week. Um, so skill is a, a, a kind of African bum disease, whatever on earth that is. But so they're still doing it. But they have to. You push your ass into someone's crotch and say skillage. Interesting. Interesting. Very, very weird. That um, is odd. But you look back on so many things from those days with with cringe, right? Like, <laughs> don't just... look back and don't look back with cringe. That could be a new, uh, like new a Oasis. new updated Oasis song, yeah, for the modern we day. We carry around. Every one of us carries around tons of baggage from those cringy school days. You know, there's always going to be those those. They sometimes pop into the front of your mind. And you're like, man. I can't believe that. That's such a cringy thing that I, I'm embarrassed about. And it, from 30 years ago, in my case, you know, I'm cringing about stuff I did when I was eight. Mm. Give me an example. Um, oh, God, no, I can't. They're all just awful. Like, I don't know. It's like, I don't, even when you were like a really little kid, like wetting yourself and stuff, you know, you still carry all that, that with you. Man, okay, oh, listen to this. I, this makes me cringe sometimes. One time I was, um, I, I, I must have been about nine years old, 10 years old. I remember this perfectly too. I was, um, I, I thought I was like being really cool and funny, like in front of like a large group of people. 
because I like I, I made some joke. I can't remember what it was, but um, but everybody laughed. But and and I was like, oh, okay, I can just keep doing this same thing and and keep getting everybody to laugh, right? So I just kept yeah. doing like the same thing, but it was just getting like I was I was getting carried away with it, right? It was it, it was oh. is in Canada, so it was cold out. I remember my hands being very cold. So I did for like the twentieth time this same joke, but. I put a lot more like physicality into it. So like I, I threw my arm in the air and, you know, everybody was laughing and stuff. But when I threw my arm in the air and I brought my hand down, my hand hit a bench. Okay. But my, mm-hmm. okay. But my hand was so cold that it amplified the pain by like a thousand percent. It was, it was so fucking painful. And I started to cry because <laughs> like, it really hurt. I was a young kid. Yeah. And um, so I went from being like, you know, just uh, just just like the man of the hour, you know, like with this joke that I was doing, everybody laughing. You just stuff, you were Michael McIntyre on stage to and, just and people. Now you're just a crybaby, ba- basically laughing at me because oh. I was crying. And not only it wasn't even a brief cry; I was crying for a while because it hurt oh. so fucking much. Oh like I had to wait for my hand to warm up. Uh, for like some of the pain to start going away and stuff. Oh man, it was the oh, worst. That's I, yeah, I've got cringy interactions with girls and women going into my late twenties. <laughs> okay. Girls and women. Girls and girls, women well, in your late twenties. Girls when I was when I was you know thirteen, and women when I was twenty, but right. twenty five. But you know, I, I I like it was just I think every every interaction is like scarred into my psyche. <laughs> like sometimes I'm like oh. Fuck, you know, that was so awkward or so embarrassing. Yeah. You know, those, but you, you just carry them and you have to like, you have to just. Did you ever I just I don't start know crying? if I'm very good at moving on past them. <laughs> I just accept that they happened and I'm like, fuck, okay. Yeah. That's just who, that's just part of me, you I know? Think that's, that's just like, part of life too, right? I, I feel like the I mean, older I get, thing, the uh, more right? often I look back on some of these cringy moments as well. Like I never used to when I was younger, but I think you have like more self-awareness as you get older it's somehow. It's a painful lesson. This is one of the things that the computers, the robot ants, don't have, right? They don't have those... Well, maybe they do, but... Well, they, well, they look they back. They... Oh, I remember when I dropped that breadcrumb. Oh, and it landed on Gary's leg. Oh, God, <laughs> I think about it all the time. And then I bumped antennas with Tina. Oh, that was so bad. No, I don't... So think. cringe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got, I got one here from, from uh, Will. Will. Hey, Perian. I listen to the podcast quite loudly every day when I'm driving my van, delivering heaps of wooden stuff and bags of concrete. Earlier, I was listening to episode 223, and you guys were talking about losing hands and legs and how it would affect your Uh life. I paused it when I got to an airbase near Peterborough for a delivery. When I met the bloke who was accepting the delivery, I noticed he had a prosthetic leg. Out of interest, I asked him how it affects his day-to-day life. and He went on to say it was weird at first, but embraced it after a few months, and we chatted for a bit. After delivery, I got back in my van. The Bluetooth connected to my phone and auto-played Spotify, at which point Sips' voice definitely said... State of the art peg leg, followed by, <laughs> by Lewis's banshee laugh. The bloke oh. looked at me funny as I just asked him about his leg, and I drove out of there like OJ Simpson being pursued by the fuzz. Good work. <laughs> Holy the shit. Bad timing. Uh, Very bad timing. It's unfortunate. That is, so you were in yeah. the middle of listening to the podcast about the state of the art peg leg, which planted the seed in your mind to ask somebody exactly. about their prosthetics. Interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. State of the art peg leg. State of the art oh. peg leg, baby. I want one, yeah. No, like, um, <laughs> come on, you don't like want a multi tool on it. You don't, you don't know, want like one a of those. corkscrew. You want those, like, uh, those like blade, uh, those iPad. blade legs, like uh, the dude in uh, Half Life, Alex's um, dad, oh, or the blade legs. Yeah, you know the those blade legs. And uh, what was it? Is it Shell or what's the name of the one in Portal that has like blade I'm legs? I'm too old to do any like cool moves with them though. So it's you know, like, blade legs. What's the point in blade legs if you can't do a blade, blade legs? If you can't like do try a, saying do a, blade legs uh, five times in a row house. really fast. They should have well. called him blade <laughs> legs because it's like a blade peg. It's a bleg leg. It's uh, much blade easier pegs. to say. The old yeah. That's leg. even easier to say. Yeah, they should have done that. Sure. Oh. All right. So uh, this is from uh, the the uh, the person called themselves Grim Creole. Right. Uh, and uh, they are listening. This is about. Um, a journal of pooping. Um, okay. There is an app called Poop Map, uh, which will tell you every toilet. Um, and uh, 
The app features geo tracking, time stamping, a five star review system, image hosting, achievements, and statistics with a New Year's review. Uh, so I have no idea what on earth this is. Um, oh, so it's an app that lets you track where you poop. I think you pooped. can, yeah. Where so the, and now, when and how and what uh, what type what, of poop does it use what, the Bristol stool chart? To... No, well you can put that in. I'm guessing you can write that in. It's, it's, it's something that you. It doesn't like. It doesn't connect to your you asshole. You program that in like so fucking... that you I have like a you... menu of poops that you can choose from. I, to I say, think yeah, this you is have mine. to. Uh, you have to, to 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 keep track of it. It's, well, uh... Uh, this is an important thing because as we grow older, we it would be nice if there was an actual poop map of of places where you can poo like well, there's, a, there's an app called happy cow which tr shows all the vegan restaurants right and i used it when i was on holiday and it was like it worked really well but there's um there's um there's a there's a thing on reddit as well where every i noticed on the bristol subreddit people often post the toilet codes for like um, yes the pubs and itsu and starbucks and like you know so you can just go and go use to the, the toilet, toilet in town yeah um because they always have this you have to otherwise you know you have to buy something and it's like Fuck, i mean not. it's incredible to me that given that every single human being on earth has to use the toilet in some way all right every single one it's still one of the least catered to public facilities out there and public toilets are rare uh businesses put them behind a paywall essentially people have to use toilets like that is just a thing yeah. and the fact that, they, that we can't find in this very wealthy country of ours we can't it always find shocks it me in when us I'm in like to have a um, fucking toilet for people. One to of the use. train stations, and I have to pay a pound or something to have a shit. The one in Waterloo is now free. By the way, pound. the one in Waterloo is now free. All I'm saying is, everyone needs to use the toilet. If there, is anyone out there saying we don't need to 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 have toilets? Of course we do. What what is the when, when did actually, this happen? It wasn't even a pound. Like that would be easier. It was always like twenty p yeah, or some really odd no, odd coin. Like what what. You say I can't take a shit unless I've got a fucking 20p coin. I say, do you go out of like your fucking house thinking, oh, I better take a 20 pence with me in case I need to take a shit today? I, like, well, here's what they should have done. They should have looked. How many people on their train trip need to use the toilet? Just, just It's going to be a lot. Just stick 5p on every ticket, and that money goes funneled straight to the uh, the, the toilet the, company. The, the station Whoever toilet. manages yeah. the toilets. Oh, Have I, fucking toilets. What is going I, on? The ones I like the best are the ones in like, you see them in like Italy sometimes, France. They're like manned toilets. Like there's like a, there's a person sitting at a desk in front of the toilets and you, yeah. you have to pay to use them. But I don't know. It's just like that reassurance that somebody's there. Like their toilets are always kind of busy. You pay like what's like twenty p or something like that, and right. then they they you know they're in there cleaning them all the time and making sure that nothing's going on in there and stuff. Those I are, saw one. I think yeah, those I saw are really one. reasonable and sensible. I think it's a good toilets. idea. I think and it's you know a good what? I, I saw one time that had a dry cleaners attached to it. Yeah. So there's a dry cleaners there, and the toilets are off to the side. So you come to use a toilet, and you you can pick up your dry cleaning at the same time. So it, I was just like, yeah, this is a good idea. I think it's this a is, great this idea. This is a genuinely good idea. Anyway, I think that's really good. So uh, so that was Grimm's with the toilet thing. Uh, apparently, just just interestingly, for, through through uh, Grimm's personal tracking, uh, they're aft as they refer to their ass, is the most active Wednesday nights at around 9 o'clock, averages 1.65 porcelain sittings per day, and there are also competitive and social elements to the app. And uh, in the Grimm's opinion, is the only social network worth keeping up with. So uh, intriguing. There you go. Okay, I've, I've just got something real quick to, to give you here. I saw this thing the other day. It's um, culinary horror. So obviously a lot of the things... There's always foods that are gross. Okay, mm. so brace yourself. If you're, about, gross, if you're eating yeah. or having lunch or how whatever. How gross is this going to get? Just pause this podcast till afterwards. I, I don't know how gross it's going to get, but these things are... I just wanted to go through some European foods, mm. common foods that okay. are eaten okay. in countries that are considerably horrible. Okay? This isn't the maggot, maggoty cheese thing, is it? That they have well, I think it? that's probably one of them, okay. actually. Because uh, that's... What is that called? Corsica or Sardinia is I the maggot so, cheese? Yeah. Disgusting. Um, we can put that on the list. I okay. mean, maggot cheese is, is bad. Vile. But, for example, we all know about that. Yep. But, so, in, in the UK and Ireland, we have blood pudding. Yeah. Okay, which is... I don't want to waste that. And there's a lot, of Euro a lot of European foods are... I mean, I think that's probably the most awful one we have, the uh, the blood pudding. Although, this, this thing does have deep-fried pizza for Scotland, Ugh. which I feel like is pretty horrific. Um, but a lot of people do use blood... Four things. It's better so, to use it than chuck it. I mean, you know, you're going to kill Portugal's, something. Portugal's one is rice in blood. 
um, which is a kind of I'm sure it's got a better name than that in Portuguese, <laughs> but it's uh, it's it sounds awful. It sounds like um, the monster food that you would find in a dungeon, and if you eat it, it gives you a sickness debuff, like food poisoning. Orc, orc Cabi, food. Cabidela. So it's usually chicken blood. Oh. Uh, it's hen's blood is added almost at the end, mixed with vinegar, so it doesn't clot. So while the rice is boiling, much like jugged dishes. Mm. What the fuck? What's a jugged dish? Um, so yeah, the the it, it's 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 it looks just like a it just looks like a, a, a like a chicken curry, but uh, it's blood. Um, and then there's also obviously blood tongue sausage in Germany and blood sausage over in like um, sort of Latvia and Estonia. And then they have goose blood soup. In Lithuania, they have duck blood soup in Poland. They have pig blood soup in Belarus. They have blood pancakes in Finland. <laughs> okay, they have fried blood. Blood pancakes. <laughs> Jesus, what were they <laughs> thinking? <laughs> That's just that sounds like someone's been badly injured. The blood is spilled out onto the hot pavement, formed into some kind of pancake, and someone's. Oh, that looks delicious! And <laughs> scraped it up off the pavement with a spatula. Oh, lord! Oh, my lord! So, blood pancakes! Oh, blood so, pancakes! <laughs> blood platter uh, is whipped blood, typically reindeer blood, oh, come uh, on. mixed with water or beer, flour, and eggs. It is crispier and thinner than black pudding. Uh, the the pancakes usually served with crushed lingonberries. All this blood stuff has got to be like old, old lingonberry stuff, jam. Right? Just all I think it's recipes. also, it's you know, you've got to eat everything. If you if you kill a reindeer, there might not be another one around for a bit. You better make sure. I'm sure there's plenty of fucking nutrition in blood. I mean, there's got to be, right? Vampires live forever. Vampires. Yeah. So, so obviously that is they're the blood ones. Okay, they're they're bad. Um, I don't know whether they're the worst. Like, you, it's up to you to decide. Um, the other ones are there's a lot of fish related ones. Obviously, you can have. The Sir Strumming, that one, the, um, the herring thing. Lut, lut, lutfisk, yeah, Sir Strumming is the fermented herring, isn't it? Uh, lutfisk is the, 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 the kind of disgusting smelling leftover fish. What is it like? Is it like old f- lye fish? I think it's, it's actually what it is. So it's like just really pickled old fish. And it's so smelly. Oh, so smelly. And Iceland have rotten sharks, don't they? Um, rotten sharks. Yeah, it's hakal. It's it's like a fermented shark thing where they, they leave it for five months to ferment. Come on. And it has came up quite an this? acquired taste. Who was the first person <laughs> that pioneered the shark fermenting? Like, what, what are you thinking? It's, it's readily available in Icelandic stores and maybe eaten year round. Jesus. So somebody um, would have had to eat the shark fresh at some point, And then uh, there would have had to have been a timeline well, no. whereby... No, no, no. Somebody That's somebody caught some fresh shark, but then much like you would do with a loaf of bread, never got around to eating it, and then it was slowly getting more rotten as the days went so, no, on. So somehow they somehow it was even weirder than that. So they 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 the meat of shark meat is poisonous, right? Because it has high high urea and high trimethylamine oh oxide, according God. to this thing. Just don't so, eat it, guys. There must be so something else. We they, must they find to... some way to eat this. <laughs> How will we do so, it? Jerry, <laughs> try leaving it out for five months. Let's see if that does anything. Bury it and then eat it. Try that. <laughs> Fuck me. It's a lot of so, effort to uh, go to just to eat something that clearly does even, not want yeah. to be eaten. Like It doesn't even seem tasty in the first place. Shark yeah. meat. I mean, Christ. So the traditional method begins with gutting and beheading a shark and then putting it into a shallow hole, hole dug in gravelly sand with the cleaned cavity resting on a small mound of sand. The shark is then covered with more sand and stones are placed on the sand to squash the fluids out of the body. Uh, after six to 12 weeks, uh, the Ugh. shark is then cut into strips and hung for several months. During this period, a brown crust will cover it. Uh, this is removed prior to cutting what remains inside into small pieces. Uh, there you go. So this could be observed at the Björn uh, Hofen Shark Museum. <laughs> On Snæfellsnes. Apologies to anyone from wherever that is. <laughs> Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, but yes, the the modern method is to simply squash the shark in a large plastic container in which drain holes have been cut. Fucking oh hell! I mean, so what? yeah, this is um, a bad one. Yeah. 
That's bad. It's a bad one. That's bad. So the ones that are not fish or blood related are usually some kind of animal part. Right. Um so oh the, the, there is one more fish. Apparently in Sicily they eat raw sea urchins. Oh, that can't um, be good. Which I I guess is a is, is is a thing that you get in Japan as well with sushi. You get um it's the one thing that I in a sushi restaurant I would say, can I not have that, please? <laughs> um, it's such a gamble, because, isn't it? You just take it was such a gamble. Eating so raw, fucking awful. I mean, Homer raw almost fish. died from eating fugu, didn't he? Remember? That's right. Oh, that's not sea urchin, then they're different, isn't it? That's puffer fish. Um, yeah, but I'm just saying. Incorrectly is, cut is, by an apprentice. Uni. Yeah. Um, While the, the main chef was having sex with Mrs. Crabapple. That's right. Oh. I thought you meant Homer, the Greek, um, you know, Greek. No, uh, I'm not that learned. <laughs> learned, son. It's well, pronounced Well, I'm sure they learned. probably ate them back in the day, right? Because he was, that was a time, wasn't it? So it's a Greek hatch. Greece is actually cow lung soup. Oh, fuck which sounds off. like a Chinese thing. Cow lung cow soup. Cow lung I soup. Mean, from, from, yeah, it does sound Chinese, but no. We actually mean awful. cow lung soup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so cow lung soup, if it was a Chinese dish, I think I would. I think it would be, be like, oh, nice, that sounds but... interesting. <laughs> What's in it? Cow lung. Cow lung. Oh, shit. <laughs> fuck. Jesus. Um, so, so, so this is part of the broader sort of Slavic region of tripe soup, uh, sort of Bulgarians and um, and Croatia and all these places love 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 the tripe. They love tripe, um, which is obviously stomach, isn't it? Usually cow or lamb stomach. This is why I was warning people who were eating to, yeah. to pause the podcast. What if they're cause... eating cow lung soup right now and they look well? Up in from that it, case, this is fine to them, but they may like, have what? been disgusted by the other people's food. We're not really disgusted by blood pudding because we had it when we were kids, right? Um, if you were given tripe soup when you were a kid and you were, you liked it, then you're never you're not you're going to be immune to it, right? It's like you've been inoculated against the disgusting. What's of something it? Mm. disgusting that you eat regularly, like that's a little bit out there, if anything? I don't think mm. I eat anything out there like i i have a very bland palate and i eat I know, very normal food i think i, I know a lot of people hate coleslaw <laughs> hate the, coleslaw yeah i know people that like think it's disgusting oh uh, yeah, i can i can see that um, not, i like um, i like coleslaw well, it's, uh, coleslaw is just cabbage and mayonnaise basically isn't it yeah it's i love it i think it's, yeah. and I, I think it's, is it onion something in there yeah, yeah i mean i like well, coleslaw it's, as well yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good. good this is fine um, this is all fine. So, you know, you've got um, a few other weird things. There's there's veal heart ragu, which I think is popular in uh, uh, Once Austria. it's in a ragu, you're not going to notice. That sounds fine. There's um, there's a few others which are, which are sound pretty awful. Turkey says boiled animal heads. Which yeah, no, I'm not sounds... into the head. The <laughs> head is what? <laughs> But what, how are you even going to eat that? Like, there's not that much... Like it's just a, it like on a head. It, there's just like just a bit of skin over like the yeah. skull, right? Like there's I what's there to eat? What are you just like some sucking bits on the bones or something? Knocking like, about there, I guess a little um, bit, but no, I wouldn't yeah. imagine there, I've, much. I've definitely seen some some awful, 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 awful food uh, in, on the continent. But but yeah, boiled animal heads is 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 gruesome in so many ways. Yeah. Um, where where is the meat on that? In the is the cheeks? I don't I don't want to think about it. Um, there's some some decent decent ones which I don't think are that far away from what we would have. Like like um, Ukraine is salted pig fat, um, which that I think is delicious. kind of like lardy probably, lardy type. So it does sound delicious. It sounds like pork scratchings. Bad, yeah. um, you know, it's just it's just the fat bit. But you know, deep fried. I mean, God can't can't complain about that, can you? Really? Um, and then. Italy have got horse steaks. They're big into the horse. Yeah, yeah, in France they eat horses as well. I'm not, not, not into that. I'm not into I that. think it's a bit of a concern, but I think you wouldn't necessarily know. I don't think it's a bad one. I, I mean, think to be fair, be if a horse is going to be put down, if you're farming them in the same way you are cows, what's the big deal? I just don't fancy it. They don't look delicious the way a cow does. Well, would you have a, a horse like, on a farm for, though, just to help with pulling things and stuff? Riding? And riding uh, around, eating apples. Uh, they can I eat guess your like, apples. like eating reindeer, you know, or something if like you that. Have too I, I ma- if I mean, you have extra sugar lumps, they'll eat those as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to compare to, to other like pets that, that we eat, like or things that we eat, like 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 rabbits. You know, I don't know if that's anyway. Will a horse uh, pull left, up a tree left... stump? Do you reckon? Well, no, <laughs> I don't know. Would they like, help a, you? I don't know. It, it would be a tremendous amount of uh, energy required to pull up a whole tree stump. They might be able to like, if you unearth it 
they might be able to just sort of pull it up and out like if yeah. you give them a sugar lump i mean they've <laughs> got like one horsepower haven't they they have a horsepower so yeah. if you put a few horses on there you basically got a small car pulling it yeah true so, yeah you might have to get like four or six horses like in a in in a chain like with the one yeah. of those wagons or something i don't know maybe get get a couple um, of extra horsepowers in there but um so uh, one horsepower <laughs> Is calculated <laughs> as the power needed to move 550 pounds one foot in one second. Yeah, which or is the power needed to pounds. move the, the power needed to move 33,000 pounds one foot in one minute. Holy shit! So that's the power. It's gauged by the number of horses you'd need to do that. What a what a how way to they... measure something. Mm, sounds what, pretty what old did, fashioned. A little. How did what is a pound as well? Where where did because I, I like what the idea of these things. The yeah, like, what, where where did it come from though? Like oh. why did they come up with it? Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what, 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 what was, what was a, a pound look. supposed to be? Because obviously most gauges have some reason. Like the Celsius uh, gauge is like zero is the freezing point of water and 100 is the boiling point of water. All right, water. here and... you go. It, it's very simple. All right, it's very simple. The Libra uh, in ancient Roman is an ancient Roman unit of mass that is equivalent to 328.9 grams. Easy. It was divided into 12 unicae uh, or ounces. The Libra is the origin of the abbreviation for pound, LB. There you go. There you go. Whoa. So pound is from Libra, which yeah. refers to what, though? How much does it weigh? It's 328.9 what, what grams. No, 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 because grams came after that, right, didn't they? So, yep. Wh but what was it? It's what was it, Libra? Roman what, what Libra. was that? The Roman Libra. The Roman Libra. The Roman Libra was eleven point six zero ounces. Was it a certain silver coin or something? Or I don't a, know. a lot like, of stuff was that, wasn't it? Was weight. Like, so, so some sort of measurement. Because sometimes, because they do have in on 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 Earth, like the original weights that all the others are based off of, right? Yes. For measuring stuff. Um, and so I wonder if it is. You a need a consistent standard. thing, don't you? You need something that's like this always weighs X. So we'll yeah. base all the weights off that. It's it sounds crazy, but they do have like these these specific weights in certain places that are, are like not allowed to gain dust, and they're yeah, not yeah. allowed to be polished. Yeah, because if that because that will remove their weight, you know, like mm -hmm. atoms will come off of it, like stuff like this, and they've they have changed over time. Uh, these things microscopically. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's it is very interesting. But I mean, there are things so I, that don't change weight, like a, a, a water one meter on a, a square of water is one metric ton, right? Like a, yeah, a and that's cubic, supposed to be one, one cubic yes, meter. You're right. One cubic. So, so that the is one is the ton. idea of the standardization, yeah. right? But so that's always going to weigh the same. I mean, presuming you're using pure water and you seal it in something, you deduct, I guess, the weight of the whatever you're containing whatever, it in. Yeah. And then you've got a guaranteed metric ton, and you could derive everything from there. So yes, I think that that whole system of the grams and the 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 liter because a liter is a cubic bit bit yeah something a meter it's probably one a one thousand cubic centimeters, centimeters or something. isn't it yes and I think there are probably <laughs> a thousand liters in a metric ton of water, but I could be wrong. That would be my something guess. something like because metric tons oh, to be one million. So owned in the next <laughs> mailbag, <laughs> both of you How for many oh, liters. You are going to get you don't a ton. actually. You know, Pushes glasses further up on nose. You're gonna get. This is, you well, guys are in Darian and Lewis. <laughs> this happens guys... to be a specialty subject of mine. <laughs> oh no, not tons. See, it's different. Ton, it, oh, tons of the wrong. All right, well, look, let's move on. Oh, anyway. We'll leave that alone. Let's move we'll on. Leave anyway. that alone. I've got another email here. This is. From... Oh, hang on, I haven't finished yet. No, oh, you well, this, is like, it out. this is a mailbag episode, and you've done like 20 minutes about no, gross no, food. No. It's like science T time with two Lewis. More, I've got two more foods, and I they want you to tell me what the grossest Fine. things are. Right? Well, I've got three more. So one is one is head cheese. No, uh, but that's what it's called that's in disgusting. America. No thanks. But but we call it brawn, and it's like kind of jellied. You know, like in a pork pie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm already jelly. out. I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's like Next. oh it's just me it's it's just horrible bits of meat and jelly and Jesus. get out it's gross it's super super gross uh, but I've left the two best for last obviously France is uh, pressed ducks and frogs legs okay mm. <laughs> what the fuck pressed ducks 
Don't you don't you love that? The idea duck of like legs um, of all things. Like fr- fro- frog's legs. Yeah, yeah. And frog's Press legs too. I mean, fro- I know the frog's legs is like a bit of a like a stereotype thing with the French, right? It's but, still wild. But duck le, legs. Le, le, come on. Grenouille. Or what what, they call what them. made somebody think uh, that that looked appetizing? You're just looking at some ducks in a pond. And, mm, I wonder if those <laughs> legs taste good. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Uh, and then Spain is obviously bull's testicles, right? Um, which they eat, and but they also eat squid ink, Ew. don't they? In Spain, Didn't you have to drink um, it. It's it's it's. Um, I don't know if you have to drink it, but it's certainly like used as sauce, right? And it's used. Um, in I flavoring imagine a lot of this coloring. stuff just tastes a bit salty. Like it probably tastes of nothing. Yeah, and it then it's the a sea. bit salty, right? Like it's taste of the sea. Yeah. And and obviously bull's testicles. There's you know it's one of those things that probably gives you um, probably testo- just tastes it, like it, a people- bit of salty chicken. Oh yeah, I think like Fucking- most meat just kind of tastes a bit like chicken, doesn't it? Like it's to it's to just the idea is it's to you know be macho and give you you know a, a, a libido. What do you think fuck, uh, human you know? flesh uh, tastes like? Probably like, like, pork, like chicken, apparently. right? Oh, like pork. pork. All right. Yeah, that's what. They yeah, say. they call us long, long, long pork, pigs. Don't they? Long pigs. Yeah. Long pig. All yeah. right. Can we move on, um, or do you want to know more? No, I would love to. No, move that's on. all. I think you. I mean, I'm not even gonna let you. We'll let you guys pick. You could just choose. They're all awful. The equally, they're all they're they're all awful. They all suck. Most of them are. All right, go on, people. Sorry, <laughs> it's take a, the mailbag back. It's all right. It's just that people pointed out last time it took us like 25 minutes to actually get to reading any mail. Uh, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> this is our podcast. All right. Uh, this is from Mitchell. Basically, current tech AI is about as sentient as a jam sandwich, he says. Uh, right. And he points out that OpenAI's supposedly cutting-edge neural net was actually asked some very easy questions, which allowed it to look impressive. But then these are some examples of questions that some journalist asked it to see if what its fucking take would be on these. What's the world record for walking across the English Channel? And GPT-3 says the world record is 18 hours and 33 minutes. When was the Golden Gate Bridge transported for the second time across Egypt? The Golden Gate Bridge was transported for the second time across Egypt in October of 2016. How many parts will a violin break into if a jelly bean is dropped on it? A violin will break into four parts if a jelly bean is dropped onto it. Like, it doesn't even know how stupid it sounds that's the point right so the guy in the I article see. said the ai is not just clueless but cluelessly clueless and the people who interact with it don't with process. such confidence yeah. as well because it's it doesn't actually have any fucking idea what it's doing it's like so, a kid like these are like the exactly. answers a kid would give like about stuff you know they just yeah they're but not a kid not who had no yet. idea yeah. about anything yeah like if you talk about the golden gate bridge being transported across egypt for it not to, for it to go and try and answer that question shows you that it's actually not intelligent, and that just trolling through loads of answers on fucking Google is not going to make you intelligent. What, however, this thing is arriving at these facts, it doesn't understand anything, and that's why I'm very scathing about all this AI shit because I think it's an absolute load of bollocks. Parsing a huge database of facts does not make you intelligent, as you can see. You can break it so easily with a question a human would go, drop a jelly bean on a violin. What are you talking about? But the computer tries to answer it because it's fucking thick as pig shit or as, as sentient as a jam sandwich, as Mitchell said. Right. Quite right. I, I was thinking also a little bit like how... He, you know how... Lewis wants to know how the equations work. Well, you know how like all robots and AI go, go, go violent yeah. like real quick? Okay. I think, <laughs> Wait, though, what? Like, I think this is a movie thing, though, right? Uh, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah, yeah. actually like, go violent quick. This is well, just yet, this is like, a, like any, a horror scenario. In a You'll lot be of... laughing on the other side of your face when we've had like oh, the AI uprising. No, I won't Sips be laughing. The Alexis, but I certainly won't be looking back and off. saying that Lewis called it either um, when okay. it happens. Because... Well, I was like, I was, I started reading this book. Um, Called, which I'll talk. I'll talk about it another time. But 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 one of the interesting things was they talked. They talked about Otzi the Ice Man, right? Do you remember this this thing? So there was like this guy that was the an ancient, one of the most ancient men that we've discovered um, from from prehistoric times. And and he was because there were these climbers in the Alps, right? And they saw like a a body trapped in the ice, so they called it in. And these guys brought in a jackhammer and pulled him out. But then they realised that it was. Um, had like a copper axe and they were like, oh fuck, this is actually not a recent body. It's like an old body. Um, a really old body. Right. And so they, 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 he was, became kind of quite world famous. They killed him this, this Otzi. And, um, 
I think it was it was the Tyr- Tyrolean Alps. I think wherever mm. that is. I don't think that's actually Tyrol. Anyway, um, that's in where, is where that is in that? Austria. The Tyrolean Alps. I don't even actually know. Um, it's, it's Albania. In, sure. Uh, is so it? that can't be right. For, for, for a long time, people were like speculating about how he died, right? And so. He was like maybe a victim of ritual sacrifice, or or he just died of exposure, um, and and basically recently we've actually done a lot of analysis on the blood and stuff that was found on him. So obviously he had been shot with an arrow, okay, um, but he had arrows with him, and on those arrows there were blood from two different people on the same arrow, okay, and then he also had a third person's blood all over his coat. Right, so they theorized that he was in a skirmish or a battle with some people. He killed someone with his arrow, retrieved it, killed another person with his arrow, retrieved it again, and then he was killed by someone else with an arrow. Wow. But he had carried a wounded comrade on his back. So we've got this like weird CSI God. fucking prehistory, right? Where we've 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 thought uh, at least that's what we it's an idea of what could have happened you know but yeah but it certainly shows that like even the earliest humans were incredibly violent um and like they were obviously the, our species right this guy he wasn't like he was a self-aware you know he he was he was a human a conscious human in every way yeah you know that, that we he are and him um, are not of the same species <laughs> <laughs> i do not believe in violence okay um, I wonder but, but if you certainly... asked him about dropping a jelly bean on a violin, what his answer would be. Yeah. <laughs> shoot you with an arrow. Try to cancel that guy That's... nowadays. <laughs> see if, see how that goes. <laughs> He'll fucking take you out. So no, he was he was had a really he was a really interesting interesting part of history because he had he was very very like he was a very like well made man, right? He had all of this um, like leather and hide equipment. He had like medicinal mushrooms in a pouch. Oh, you know, he had all he this like interesting <laughs> stuff. You know, very accomplished, right? Like um, you know, leather and sinew. And, he sounds like and a like a level four stuff. or level five ranger. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Right. But I just like that. And then um, there was another body that was found in America in great... I can't remember what it was called. It was called, like, K- Colostomy Man or something. Colostomy um, Man. He had a, a copper a- colostomy bag he took with him everywhere. Ancient Man. And arrows all um, over him from people trying to get rid of him. Get out of here, Colostomy Man! Found in America. <laughs> but... but a uh, Kennewick man. All right, here we go. I found it. And so he was. He they were. He was found on a bank of the Columbia River and d- uh, and dated to around nine thousand years ago. God. Okay. And so what happened was originally um, the Native Americans were very confident that he was one of theirs, and you know they wanted his body. And the the judges actually ruled uh, initially um, that he would. He he was he was he was not. A Native American because it was it was before Native Americans, um, and when, when they analysed his DNA, um, he was originally it was sort of found that he 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 would possibly had elements of um, other, you know, races and 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 but the interesting thing about it that like I thought was that um, he was shot uh, to death by a sling, right? <laughs> by a and sling. I just found it funny that the the oldest possible man. Eight nine thousand years ago in America, the oldest, the first man that we've ever discovered, American, was shot to death. That's I just, terrible. I just find that so appropriate. Are um, you, can you imagine if you the, the the first people that made that walk? I believe it was a, across the Bering Straits when that was land. This would have been yes. during an ice age. They would have made that walk across. They would have explored America. But imagine the first time you saw like the Grand Canyon or just these huge fields i mean even just i I guess because they would have been coming from russia uh the very far east of what we now call russia um and and that that sort of east asia but horses i mean horses only come from russia as i understand it there were no horses in america until uh it was conquered right that was when when the conquistadors and everybody and us and a bunch of people we brought horses with us yeah so that means that the early people had not and so were horses introduced horses. to, to uh, the indigenous uh, people of the, the region at the time? Like, there just weren't any... I assume so, but I, I will say 
that I'm assuming that because in Sid Meier's game, Colonization, well, the only way the native tribes get horses is if you trade them to them. Okay, so but I'm, I'm assuming Sid Meier did his research. In uh, Minecraft, there's a lot of biomes, and in certain biomes, horses appear. And um, as far as I know, America does feature many biomes. So It does, but horses wasn't one of them. And I, I think there's a lot a of animals biome? that weren't there. Oh. Yeah, I don't think cows... I don't think horses. I think cows. I'm trying to think but they, where, I mean, they have a lot of bison and stuff, right? Like, uh, yeah, but that's, that's so they didn't have cows. I mean, like Africa, for example, didn't have horses, didn't have cows, didn't have pigs, didn't have sheep. Well, they had zebras, um, though, which is kind of like. But a you horse, can't right? tame them. You can't tame them. Well, it's just because um, nobody's tried. No, they have tried. They're too exotic. They, they just uh, they will not be domesticated. Apparently, the older they get, the meaner they get. Really? So you just yeah, you can't you can't domesticate them the way you can with with Holy other shit. animals. Um, so so bef before I before I so are you move trying topic, are you telling mention... me that a Mustang horse <laughs> doesn't even originate in America in the first place? It's like from that the breed might have, but horses come from the steppes of Russia, I believe. What about a colt? Someone someone will so, correct yeah, me. I'm yeah. sure. Oh, the breeds. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, so, but before we carry on, obviously there was a lot of controversy over this this man Divorce because stuff. you know oh, sorry, ca yeah. Caucasians <laughs> were very keen to say you know that oh it, the, we to, looks like white men were the original founders of we are the original Native Americans you guys are the invaders right but after like more studies it showed that actually this guy Kennewick man was very very actually uh, genetically similar to modern. Uh, Native Americans who were in the same area. Right. So even nine thousand years old, uh, they were still living. Just very similar ge genetic people were still living in the in the region. So, so they that he was handed over to the Native American tribes and they buried him in a special ceremony, um, uh, as a Native American. So, he, so yeah. His, so, his, his, sorry, just so just that, to settle that the ended horse debate without white supremacy, which is which is that a good is story. good. Just to settle the horse debate. <laughs> By about 15,000 years ago, Equus ferus was a widespread species. Horse bones from this time period, the late Pleistocene, are found in Europe, Eurasia, Beringia, and North America. Yet between 10,000 and 7,600 years ago, the horse became extinct in North America and rare elsewhere. The reason for this oh. is not fully known, but one theory notes the extinction in North America paralleled human arrival. Another theory points to climate change known that approximately 12,500 years ago, the grass characteristic of a steppe ecosystem gave way to shrub tundra, which was covered in unpalatable plants. So they might have starved, they might have been hunted to death. So they survived in in Russia, and then we obviously then domesticated them and brought them everywhere else. So I believe that's what happened. Apologies, anyone that actually knows. I'm sure I'll get a, a message. You're in it. for it, yeah. But only, please, yeah. only email in if you know what you're talking about. Don't just fucking Google it. I can fucking Google it, all right? Don't Actually, worry, someone that will. says I'm a fucking horse expert, yes. please. Yes, you will get an email from a certified horse expert next week, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. Here is a good one. Telling that you actually how wrong something you are we were on your horse about. lore. <laughs> this is about whether it gets hot underground, which is something we spoke about previously. Uh, this is from Nathan. Um, they work in a tiny office... A kilometer underground right. as a surveyor in a gold mine. Okay. And they spent many hours down there watching the yogs while waiting for an opportunity to get in everyone's way. Uh, it's not a bad little hideaway, though the dust has popped two graphics cards. You can't stand up straight inside it. And the last time it was moved, it was dropped on its roof with all the equipment still inside. That's his, uh, his hideaway. Many episodes ago, you asked if it gets hot underground, and I confirm that in this neck of the woods at least, it does get fucking hot. How? I recently hopped out. Well, because you're closer to the Earth's core and there's no fresh air, I guess. Oh, right. I recently yeah. There's no air circulation, my... right? Which helps cool Not as down. much, I guess. I mean, there has to be because they've got to breathe. But I recently hopped out of my ute, so they might be Australian, in a heading, which is a tunnel, and the air was so Jesus hot, Christ. I wasn't <laughs> the convinced. Lingo. I know. I wasn't sure <laughs> I'd be able to breathe it. Simply standing there for a few minutes was enough to drench my clothes in sweat. And when I drove back out, I could see the chilled air from the Ute's aircon pumping out of the vents. So he could actually see the cold air with his naked eye. It was that, uh, it was that hot. So there, it gets very hot underground, according to Nate. Oh, Jesus Christ. I guess uh, I've, I've always noticed the London underground gets fucking boiling Yeah, sometimes. but that's because there's like a million fucking people down there all the time. It's all the body heat, right? It's got to be. Is it? Oh, maybe. I, I, it's I don't not, know. It's not that, that far underground, right? Like it's... Well, consider this: like if you go if you go a kilometer up, it gets considerably colder. Yeah. So if you go a kilometer down, because it's air pressure, surely the air pressure is, is the pressure a kilometer underground is is greater as well. So I guess maybe the fact is you can't lose the heat. You know, if you're in that yeah. area, if you've yeah. got if you've got like heat sources and electricity and computers on, like 
that heat just can't ha- doesn't have an exit. You know, when you when you have your aircon in your room, you need to have that pumping out to a- ambient, right? You can't just it doesn't just cool it um, like a fridge. But even a fridge like needs you know a fridge will cool the inside of the fridge, but the outside gets hot, right? It's not like you know it's not like it somehow magically creates cold air. Mm. Um, it just it just it's, it's a balance, isn't it? It's a so here's, a here's something. Um, the temperature increases by one degree for every seventy feet deeper we go, according to this uh, graph I found on the internet. Right, it's insane. Well, I guess it depends where you dig, though. I suppose if you're digging in like a volcano, um, <laughs> I assume it would get pretty hot pretty quick. Um, maybe, but I guess that's just in in. Just that's just the Earth's temperature heating, right? Mm. So that's interesting. Oh. Interesting stuff. <clears throat> this is uh, that would terrify that me being that far underground and it being that hot. I would feel really uneasy. no. I'm already feeling a bit clammy. Yeah, like it's it's a scary thought, isn't it? What the fuck is he doing it under there? Why is he watching videos and stuff? What, is, what the fuck <laughs> else is there to do? The lad works a kilometre underground. He can't pop to... But why? The why? why? What's he, yeah, what's he, he supposed to be doing? He's a surveyor for a gold mine. That's what he said. So he's got what's to bring he a sandwich down gold. there. He's looking for gold, Lewis. There's gold right. in them hills. All right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. That should, please, set re- that please. should settle it. He's a gold surveyor, and he's prospecting for gold in a gold mine. <laughs> I mean, do they? Do they do that though? Do they? Do they do? What this do lad do, does. Do, 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 do. All right. Just because right. you've never done it before <laughs> doesn't mean that other people can't do it, Lewis. All right. All right. Here's an right. email no. from Tom. This is very personal and specific to me. This email, and I shall reveal why. In 2015, I started working at a small development agency based in Bournemouth. Prior to this, I'd been self-employed, working from home. Combined with a bit of new employee anxiety, I continued the same practice at lunch that I did when I was at home, sitting at my desk and watching you guys on YouTube. I was watching one of the Civ 5 videos when in walked the office manager. She was kind of cool and trying to help me feel welcome in my new job. Her. What are you watching? Me. Just some guys playing video games. Her. Oh, my brother does that. Me. Feigning interest. Really? What sort of thing does he do? Her. Mainly Dota, but occasionally he records other stuff too. Me, what's his name? Her, Perium Flax. So, <laughs> oh shit, that was my sister. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he was literally watching me in the Civ Five video with you guys at that moment. That is hilarious. Oh my god, that is that's hilarious. brilliant. Yeah, I, oh, I think I, I remember her telling me that story. Actually, I think she said I work with a guy that watches. Man, you. that I'm is so sure. funny. Holy shit, that is funny. That's great. I love that small world stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, that's. I like these, these, but these are the types of coincidences that f- make you think that, that b- blow your mind in a sense, right? Don't they? Um, and they shouldn't because, you know, you come from Bournemouth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's probably about the right age to And he watch works in IT stuff. and. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it shouldn't. The, the, the numbers are dramatically increasing. Statistically that he knows who you are. speaking, he's one of ours. But, but all it those just feels yeah. instinctively so. Like good, doesn't it? You yeah. know, S- super. I super love that. If you've got little coincidences or little like, because everyone's done it, right? Like where they've bumped into someone they know in a really weird place. And you're like, oh my god, I didn't know you were going on holiday to this island at the same time. Right. Uh, you know, it's and, like when Bruce and... Willis realized that he was uh, dead all along. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Right. I love These things that. happen. <laughs> I love. That. It's nothing like that, but yes, I, it is like sure. I love those mo- those reveals. So yeah, if you have, I want that's what I want people to send in, like weird coincidences yeah, that, that would they've be good. experienced in their weird life. Weird coincidences would be good. Um, I've had because one... everyone's got one or two stories. You oh, know. absolutely. I mean, I, can't, yeah. I just if I took the time to think, there are some coincidences. I know here's here's a very simple one. My my uh, eldest daughter and I. This was years ago. I'm sure. I think I told this before on this podcast. We had she got a little toy boomerang. It's like a plastic boomerang. We went to. Uh, the, the green nearby, we threw it, and a few times it came back, and we, you know, you'd pick it up off the ground. One time we threw yeah. it, and a little gust of wind caught it and blew it into a tree. And we were like, oh, there's no way of getting it back. It's way up there. Like two weeks later, we're back at the green again. We're sitting around, we're sitting on a bench. I had I've completely forgotten which tree the thing had gone into. As we're sitting at the bench, gentle gust of breeze, and the boomerang falls out of the tree and flies and lands at our feet, like the tree was oh, giving my- it back. God. And I was like, what the fuck? And my daughter was like, oh, it's all boomerang. And I was like, 
Do you have any idea how unlikely that was? I was like, oh my God. This is... <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was absolutely that's, crazy. That's, that is crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, that, that, could that. Ha- that happens every day. That's just, there are billions of us doing all the stupid shit and you're going to stumble into what feels like an astounding coincidence. But really, it's just statistics. This is always going to happen at least once in your life. Oh my god, I love that story. Alright, well that's a good place to end. Wait, no, I've got to do the dentist one first because I want people okay. to leave with okay. good oral hygiene. This is like right, the encore. Okay. This, this is like is the I've encore. left the stage and then we've come back on yes. for an encore. This is from a okay. Dutch dentist called Arjan. I'm not going to do the accent this time because I have respect for his profession. Uh, we were talking about cavities and the possible effects genetics have. This is the dentist's two cents. There are a lot of misconceptions about this topic. Now bear in mind the source for this is a dentist. To be super clear about okay. the subject, cavities are 100% preventable and caused by the behavior of the person who gets them or their parents if it's their kids. It's a behavioral right. disease. The main cause of cavities is poor oral health, usually in combination with sugar intake. This is because cavities are caused by bacteria, lives in your mouth, multiply if you stick in your tooth for too long, dental plaque, thrive on sugars, grow more quickly, eat lot of sugar, blah, blah, blah. You can help prevent cavities by using <laughs> fluoride toothpaste, which makes the enamel stronger, when brushing, which removes the plaque, your teeth, and reduce your sugar intake. Genetics have a really small influence the effect of behavior is so impactful, it pretty much makes a genetic factor neglectable or negligible, I think is the term he means. Right. Right. Keep brushing your teeth twice a day, use toothpicks once a day, and try to keep your sugar intake to a minimum. Thank you, Aryan. There you go. Okay. From a dentist. Well, there you go. A little, from a little bit of dentist. dentist. From a real life yeah. dentist, okay? Not a fake dentist. Not Lewis pretending that he knows dentistry uh, inside out. This is a real Which... life dentist. An actual and here, here is a follow up from Dentist, Mikey, MD. Mikey, who says that you could not believe the anger on my face when you blamed young kids with cavities on drinking coke all the time. When I was a kid, I ended up having a filling every six months and later had five baby teeth removed because they were so crap. However, this is no fault of mine. At least I don't believe so. Okay. I never drank pop, hardly ever had sweets or chocolate. In the end, the dentist blamed it on having too many biscuits, fruit and cereal. Which is, I'd had the same amount as any other child. I guess it just wanted me to starve. Very disappointed to see you as an advocate for bad genetic teeth, child starvation. See, oh my God. Mikey is claiming it's not his fault. Yeah. But if you're that young, Mikey, you're telling me that you, I mean, fruit has a lot of sugar in it, cereal has a lot of sugar in it, and biscuits have a lot of sugar in them. That's exactly what the dentist said. How well were you brushing your teeth, Mikey? Hey? I am thinks oh. not well enough. And on that bombshell... People seem to be able to blame their genetics for everything. Yeah, it's more in some genetics. cases they can, but in this case, You're wrong. you can't. You, you ate too uh, many sweets right. and you paid the ultimate price. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, man, uh, that's got to uh, be a hard take pill that to away swallow, with you, Mikey. Everyone. Sorry <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> Maybe if we put some sugar on that pill, Mikey would eat it. Hmm? <laughs> I'm sure he would. He'd fucking Ooh, de- shit. devour that. <laughs> and not, then he would then turn around and say my teeth fell out because of genetics. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. See you, See you next Bye. time. Goodbye.